Hey guys, Jason Creel, and this is The Lawn Care Life. I want to talk to you about a weed today that can give people absolute nightmare fits, okay? It's Dallas grass. If you don't know what Dallas grass is, well, that, then you're fortunate. But if you live in the South like I do, you may be familiar with Dallas grass. It is a clumpy, nasty, grassy weed that can absolutely take over your yard and is very difficult to get rid of. But in this video, I'm going to show you what Dallas grass looks like and I'm also going to give you some strategies on how to kill Dallas grass in your lawn. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Weed control is a uh, a learning game. That, that you know, I think some people think that there's just one magic product that's going to get rid of all the weeds. Uh, that's not true. But today we're talking about one of the most difficult weeds out there to control. And uh, one of the ones that I really just cringe when I see it in one of my customers' lawns, you know, if I get a new customer and they've got a lawn full of douse grass, you know, it, I just know, hey, that's going to be a process to get rid of it. All right, so let me show you what douse grass looks like. We'll talk about it, and then I'm going to show you the control options. All right, so you look here. We've got a, a big patch of, of Bermuda. We're in um, late October when this is being filmed. So, uh, and it's gonna get cold this weekend, so probably the green will, will be taken out of this Bermuda. So this is mostly Bermuda grass here. But as you get closer, you're gonna see, you see those big wide blades? All right, so you got, you got a little bit of clover in here, you know, whatever. And then, but this big wide blade, that's your Dallas grass, okay? Now a lot of times people confuse Dallas grass and crabgrass. And I'm going to talk about that and why um, from a weed control standpoint we approach these uh, in a completely different manner. Alright, so now that we know what Dallas grass looks like, and, if, and I don't know if you can see, but I mean if you, you can see the, the, the big broad uh, leaf blades on the douse grass throughout this yard. I mean, this is what happens a lot of times in a Bermuda yard. It just gets totally covered with douse grass. I mean, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's everywhere. So the idea that, hey, you know, my yard looks like this, douse grass all through it. And, and let me say this, this is late October. About two months ago, the douse grass would be so big and nasty and ugly and it's one of those weeds where you feel like you've got to cut the grass every three or four days um, because the douse grass grows so fast and aggressive. There's a close-up of a clump of it there. Okay, so that's douse grass. Now let's talk about how to control it uh, in your lawn. Okay, so I mentioned, you know, the difference in douse grass and crabgrass. Well, here's the main difference between the two and why we treat them so differently from a weed control standpoint. Crabgrass is an annual, okay? It, it germinates every spring, it dies off when the weather gets cold, and so what we do is, the main thing we're trying to do with the crabgrass is put out a pre-emergent before it germinates to keep the vast majority of it uh, from ever, you know, from ever being seen in your lawn. Now let's say you get some later and you come in with a post-emergent and try to get rid of your crabgrass. Dallas grass is a perennial, meaning that it doesn't re-germinate every uh, spring. I mean, it, it's there, you know, so it's it's there and it's going to be there the next year and the next year and the next year. Now, it'll it'll go through a, a dormant period in the in the winter, you know, but it, it's the same plant that comes back the next year. I'm going to give you five strategies on how to control Dallas grass in your lawn, okay? You may not like all the strategies and all the strategies may not be applicable to your yard, but if you check out these five strategies and then find which one is going to work best for you, or you know what, it may end up being a combination of the five. All right, strategy number one. This is for Bermuda lawns only. If you have a Bermuda lawn and you're loaded with Dallas grass, and I, and I say loaded because I don't like to do this unless there's you know a significant amount of Dallas grass. But when I go to a customer's house, Loaded with Dallas grass, Bermuda yard, here's what I tell them. I say, listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wait until your Bermuda goes dormant. And when I say dormant, I mean dormant, dormant, not kind of half green, half, you know, dormant. 
I mean, dormant, like you get down in the grass, you start feathering around in the grass and you don't see any green, even down in the bottom by the chutes, okay? When it is dormant, so in my area, Alabama, and I'm emphasizing dormant, and we want to read the label, and you read the label, and it's going to tell you dormant. Uh, I know I've repeated myself, but that I can't overemphasize that. We're going to spray the entire yard with glyphosate which is the product that you know the chemical found in roundup okay you think well i'm that are you crazy no okay so you can actually read on the glyphosate products and it'll tell you it's labeled for dormant bermuda it's not labeled for dormant we're not talking about dormant zoysia we're not talking about dormant centipede we're not talking about dormant saint augustine dormant bermuda we can spray dallas grass after the bermuda goes dormant so why does that work well, think about this. You have a what, Roundup or glyphosate works on a green leaf. Okay, so if the leaf's green, it's gonna the plant will take it in and it you know kills the plant. All right. Well, if it's dormant, it's not green. So the idea is it's not that your grass is dormant, but the, there's a window of opportunity where the Bermuda will go dormant, but the uh, Dallas grass is actually still got some green to it. Okay, so in my area, that's usually maybe sometime in December. Okay, so we get some cold weather, uh, we have some freezes, and the Bermuda's dormant, but the Dallas grass has still got some green to it. Especially, and this works better on a, on a warm day. So let's say December, we get up in the 60s for two, three days in a row, uh, but we've had some freezing weather. So the Bermuda's dormant got some life coming in that Dallas grass. You can see these green clumps in the brown or tan Bermuda grass. That's your window of opportunity, okay? And so you're gonna mix up the glyphosate. I use a 41% glyphosate product. Let me show you. All right, check this out. This is a, a generic uh, glyphosate product, Glystar Pro, 41% glyphosate. Um, you, you can buy these generic products a lot cheaper than, than you can the name brand. So, um, and, and you're going to mix that up. You want to mix that up in a, in a backpack or a little handheld sprayer. You're going to go at a rate of about one ounce uh, per gallon of water. Okay, so one ounce of this and a gallon of water. And you're going to go out there and you kind of lightly mist it over the Dallas grass, preferably on a warm day. All right, now you're not going to see, it's not like, you know mid-august when it's 100 degrees and you go spray some glyphosate on a weed in your driveway and the next day it's wilted and turning brown okay it's not going to happen that way we're, remember we're talking about in cooler weather the plants a lot slower to take in the uh, the roundup or the glyphosate and so you know the idea is it's slowly going to kill that plant and hopefully uh, the following spring it's going to be dead now this works okay it doesn't work perfectly Okay, and, I'll, and I want to give you another caution. I want to tell you one thing, uh, and you may be surprised to find this out, but golf courses do this all the time. I talked to a golf course superintendent, and this is just part of their annual program. They And he told me, and this was his tip, he said, if you do this, spray wall to wall. Now, what do you mean by wall to wall? It means if you got your whole yard uh, covered in Dallas grass, and like I said, I wouldn't do it unless I had a lot of Dallas grass probably. Um, but he said, go ahead and spray the whole the whole yard. The reason being, and that's not 100% necessary, but the reason he said that is sometimes spraying that dormant Bermuda, even though it won't kill it, it might slow it from greening up the next year. So if you spray like spots of your Bermuda lawn, you might have in those spots, the Bermuda might take longer to turn green the following spring. So it's going to look kind of funny if some spots are turning green, other spots are or not you know so you know you might want to go ahead and spray the whole yard and let the whole yard be slow to green up the fawn spray okay like i said this does work it's not a guarantee that you're going to get every single clump of dallas grass dallas grass is very difficult to kill and i'll say this if you don't kill it if you just what i call wound it then it's going to come back with the vengeance the next year i mean so you you know just understand that you might get a lot of it. This might be a, a longer process, but that's one strategy you can use to get rid of a lot of douse grass, particularly if you have a Bermuda lawn that's just totally loaded. All right, guys, strategy number two on how to get rid of douse grass in your lawn. Now, this is a summer strategy, 
okay so so the one the first strategy i told you was was a winter strategy this one's in the summer but i want to caution you on this this is not legal on a residential property this is legal on golf courses on right of ways uh, things like that so you want to read the label but there's a product that used to be labeled for residential lawns until a few years ago that's known as msma okay msma is your secret weapon absolute knock it out in the summer product um, for Dallas grass and, and some other pro other weeds as well. MSMA works better in warm weather, so I would say you know 80 degrees or warmer. And if you've got a uh, again, this MSMA is labeled for Bermuda and Zoysia lawns. Okay, so don't again, we're not doing this on Centipede St. Augustine. Uh, but if you have a Bermuda or Zoysia lawn, and again, it's not legal on residential properties, but on golf courses, right of ways, things like that. Um, but with MSMA, you can go in there in the middle of the summer, spray uh, the MSMA on the Dallas grass, and you'll start seeing results very quickly. Now, it does take multiple applications usually, and, and like I said before, if you just let's say you do one application the dallas grass starts turning yellow and brown and wilting you think look i got it i mean i killed it most likely you didn't you wounded it and it's going to come back meaner and badder than ever so multiple applications with the msma uh, to get rid of the dallas grass uh, but it does work and it works great just not legal on residential properties let me show you the msma All right, target 6.6 .6 is what this is labeled at, uh, but this is this is MSMA uh, and works wonders on Dallas grass in the summertime. Okay, strategy number three on Dallas grass. I'm going to show you a combination of products. One thing that people do in the in the lawn care business, and I don't really do this, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, they'll use uh, this product Celsius on Dallas grass in the summertime. So you'll see lawn care companies and they're out there spraying the Dallas grass with Celsius. Now what happens is it, it, it'll turn it yellow a little bit and in the customer's mind they're like look he, you know he's, he's working on that weed. Well it doesn't usually kill the, the Dallas grass. So I personally don't even do that. I mean I, I, in one way you're saying hey customer I'm you know look at me I'm I'm working on that weed but end of the day i find it better just to communicate with the customer and just say hey look you've got dallas grass i'm not ignoring it but our best opportunity to kill this dallas grass is going to be in the fall uh, and in the winter so you know what i'm saying is in the middle of summer i'm not walking around spraying the celsius on dallas grass because i know it ultimately is not going to kill it but um why I mean, you heard me mention fall and winter so why is fall and winter important for the for the next uh, two strategies i'm going to share with you dallas grass well you think about it when you have the dallas grass that's the strongest and, and this goes true for a lot of weeds but in the, i mean the middle of summer that's when the dallas grass is the, at the peak of its growth it's like trying same thing trying to kill crabgrass or a lot of other weeds i mean if you can get them early in the life cycle or late it's just a lot easier if you wait in the middle of summer when that weeds at its absolute peak at least for that year uh for that life cycle it, it's just it's more difficult to kill okay so in the fall um the plant is going into dormancy it is um you know storing up a lot of energy in its roots so it's more susceptible to take in the uh the weed control product so um, let me show you a combination that can have some success on dallas grass again multiple uh, applications and for a surfactant we recommend using mso or methylated seed oil it's uh, the way it's described to me basically it, it heats it up a little bit okay so we're not we're not trying to play around with with plant here okay we're trying to knock it out so you'll use the methylated seed oil as your surfactant you should have better results in getting rid of the dallas grass so um so we're going to combine two products product one is celsius product two is revolver okay now let me just say you know revolver is expensive but I, I like revolver i keep it because it will knock out poa if you miss it with your fall pre-emergent and you need to get rid of some poa annual in your yard uh, revolver is good for that there you know there's a lot of 
a lot of uses, but uh, the combination of these two products um, is greater than than just Celsius alone for Dallas grass. Now, D Dallas grass will be on the label for Celsius to show some level of control, but mixing it with Revolver and doing multiple applications uh, in the fall uh, can give you some control of Dallas grass. So when I say multiple applications, we're looking at, uh, in my area, you know, sometime around September uh, to early October, and then again, four to six weeks later, uh, with another application again you want to check the label on all these things that is for bermuda and zoysia as well the number four recommendation is a product called tribute total and tribute total is put out by bayer labeled for bermuda and zoysia lawns so if you got bermuda or zoysia and what they say is to treat it twice in the fall and again the following spring so you're going to hammer it in um, august september october sometime in that range then again four to six weeks later and then you're gonna come back uh, the following spring, you know, around April. And if the Dallas grass survived those first two applications and through the winter, then you come back and hit it again the following spring. And hopefully that'll knock out the Dallas grass. Um, now, now this tribute total is, is expensive. It's not something you're gonna to wanna to mix in some big tank spray and blanket the whole yard. Um, like I said, if, I, if I've got a yard that's got tons of Dallas in a Bermuda lawn, I'm going to use the glyphosate trick, but if there's just a little bit or if it's in a zoysia lawn, a uh, tribute total is many times the route that I would recommend um, as, it, as opposed to the combination of Celsius and Revolver. All right, guys, I'm going to give you strategy number five. You're not going to like it, but in a, uh, in any, if you got a centipede yard, it's full of Dallas grass, or if you just got a little bit of Dallas grass, or if these other methods don't work, strategy five is simply pull it up by hand or with a shovel. Let me see if I can pull a chunk of Dallas grass up. This also is more easily done uh, in the fall, winter, early spring. You try to pull up some Dallas grass in the middle of summer, you feel like you're arm wrestling a gorilla. It has got some serious roots and you're probably gonna lose. So you might have to use a little shovel or wait until a different, si a different time of the year or after we've had some rain or something soften up the ground. Let's see if I can yank some Dallas grass up out of the earth. All right. Let's see if I can find a Dallas grass victim here that I want to do some damage on. And if you get a piece of Dallas grass, a big hunk, let's say you got a beautiful lawn, you got two big clumps of Dallas grass that are kind of messing up your lawn. What you can do is get out there on when, the, when the, after a big rain, it softens up the ground, or get a shovel and just dig it up. And then you might even want to take a hammer and a nail and nail it up on a post in your yard as a warning sign that this is what happens to Dallas grass when it comes to our house. Just to let it know that it's not welcome here. All right, I can't find any just great looking clumps, but let me see if I can get, get some of this out of the ground. It almost makes me mad. That was like so easy to pull it up this time of year. But sometimes you find a huge clump and I mean, I get down on both knees, I grab it with both hands and I start pulling it and you feel like you are in an absolute wrestling match with a grown man trying to pull up the Dallas grass. Uh, and it's some, there's a sense of victory when you actually get it um, pulled up. So anyway, that's not the best strategy, uh, you know, digging it up by hand. Like I said, if your yard's totally loaded with Dallas grass, forget getting out there pulling it all up by hand. I mean, that you'll be out there for hours and hours and hours. But if you just have a few clumps, it's not a bad option. And again, unfortunately, if you've got Centipede or St. Augustine, something like that, you know, Tribute Total, MSMA, um, Revolver, and Glyphosate, none of those are safe options for those grass types. So really, you don't have a lot of options, to be honest with you, other than, you know, manually removing it with a shovel or by hand. You see that? That's a big chunk of Dallas right there in a Centipede line. Now, I mean, it, it, you know, like I said, these products I'm talking about are not labeled. There's an, another clump of Dallas. These products are not labeled for centipede. So, you know, you're basically left with the idea that you've got to pull it up by hand. which is not easy but you know 
what I like to do when I pull one of these guys up just leave it laying on the driveway and let it die and hopefully be somewhat of a message to the rest of the Dallas grass in the yard not to come around here that's a little bit of exaggeration I don't really do that I just throw it on the grass and mow over it with a lawnmower but um, it, it, it's a pain to pull up you can get it sometimes when after a rain or in the fall or winter when it's not as rooted. If you try to pull it up in the middle of summer, it, it's got some serious roots and uh, it's aggravating and you, and you might pass out from, from straining too hard. So anyway, hope this has helped learn how to handle douse grass. All right, guys, check out these other suggested videos coming up. If you hadn't done so, go ahead and subscribe to the Lawn Care Life channel. I hope to continue to provide more helpful videos. Give me your comments below. What has your, been your experience with Dallas grass? Have you had some success with it or is it an absolute thorn in your side? And is there another weed that you're having a lot of difficulty with uh, that you'd like me to discuss? Talk to you soon.